Well, welcome everyone. Uh, it's good to see you. Um, looking forward to getting started uh, again uh, in our study of the Book of Romans. Uh, we took a little bit of a break uh, over the Christmas season, and uh, rightly uh, reflected on Christ's incarnation, the fact that he came to deliver us. Uh, now we're going to come back into the Book of Romans. And uh, if you remember, we went through the first four chapters uh, over the fall. Uh, and we really started at the bottom. We started with uh, humanity estranged from God, uh, not because God had somehow hidden himself or somehow uh, run off from them, but because they had run off from him and they repudiated him and turned his back, turned their backs on him. And uh, it didn't make any difference if they had given themselves fully uh, to the potential of their fallen selves or whether or not they had tried to be moral people. They were all trying to... Um, uh, to relate to God on their own terms. They're all trying to um, get God to adapt to the way that they wanted uh, to be related to him as if uh, either one, he didn't matter or uh, two, that they could earn a place of favor with him by doing the right things. And if you remember, we came to the point where we recognized that all uh, were shut up before the bar of God's justice because all had sinned and all fell short of God's glory, of the standard that he had called for them. Uh, and it was dark, uh, and this is chapter 3, verse 20, and then chapter 3, 21 to 26, by God's grace, he broke in, in Christ, uh, to uh, both uh, justly condemn sin, by Christ taking it for us on himself, and also to make it possible that we could be righted with him. And then in chapter 4, Right, we stepped into Abraham as our exemplar, as our example of what it meant to be uh, rightly related to God, how faith came into play. And so Abraham taught us about faith. Well, now we're making a turn now to look at this new life that we have uh, by virtue of the fact that God has righted us based on what Christ has done. When we gave up and we put our trust in what Christ has done uh, and what he had done had been put to our account. Uh, so that we could uh, be rightly related to God. So we're going to be in chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. And here Paul is going to talk about the first thing, that we inhabit this new uh, relationship with God, and he's going to describe it as a place of favor, that we stand in the land of grace. And it's a place of peace, a place of flourishing, uh, where God is moving toward us, uh, to experience the fullness of the life that he's made possible in Christ. But as Paul talks about it, he wants to remind us, right, that we're in the process of God working out his purposes in history. So we still live uh, anticipating Christ's return and when he's going to right everything. And so even though we've been righted with God, we live in a fallen, broken world. And so we live in hope uh, of uh, God fully completing everything that he's begun. But it's a confident expectation that we have uh, because it's rooted in God's faithfulness and it's displayed, his love is displayed in what he's done in Christ. But he also wants to encourage us that even though we live in this broken moment, that we're going to go through all kinds of hardship, disease, reversals, attacks, oppression, right? That Christ is going to be working in and through us by the Spirit uh, to take us into the life and sustain us that we've been given in Christ uh, even as we wait for Christ's return. So we begin this Sunday by looking at this new life that we have in Christ, uh, both its ultimate uh, hope as well as its current uh, experience. So one of the things that we're going to be talking about uh, this Sunday that I want you to think about um, is that Paul describes this present life as a life of endurance, of, of holding on to the truth about God and following him in the face of adversity and difficulty. And one of the things that I want to encourage you to talk about as your group is where are the places in your life, in your relationships, uh, where God is asking you to trust him, to hold on to what's true uh, in the face of other voices in the culture that are trying to tell you to go other ways. Where is he telling you to hold on, uh, to restrain yourself, uh, to stay faithful even in the face of opposition or neglect or awkwardness. Uh, talk about those uh, because God's promise is, is that when we look to him and trust him and hold on to him, 
that that endurance is going to lead to approved character. It's going to lead to a life that's shaped by the passions and priorities of Christ. And that in turn will heighten our hope. So I look forward to talking to you about this very important passage. And I hope your group discussions are rich uh, and encouraging. God bless you.